Hi all. So today we are going to discuss a problem on plane change. Okay. Uh, second problem on plane change. The question is a satellite in low altitude parking orbit of inclination 28 degree and radius 6570 kilometer is to be transferred to a geostationary orbit of radius 2. 42160 that is 42,160 kilometer sorry 60 kilometer and inclination of 0 degree compare different options for transfer and suggest one which saves fuel so here uh, the question is about transferring a satellite from one parking orbit of radius it's a circular parking orbit of radius 6570 kilometer to a uh, geostationary orbit so uh, the size of the orbits are changing okay size of the orbit is changing so first one what is happening is size of orbit is changing and the second one is the inclination becomes zero degree initially it was 28 degree and it is now zero degree and second case, second one is inclination is changing so that uh, there are two changes happening size of the orbit is changing and inclination is also changing so this results in a transfer of combined plane change combined plane change okay so uh, now we can just draw the figure for this case okay so uh, it's given that uh, initial orbit size, sorry, size of the initial orbit. So, first, assume this is our main body, okay. So, main body in the sense this earth, okay. So, and we are having a first initial or initial parking orbit, okay, initial parking orbit of what is the radius 6570 kilometer. So, assume we are having another one orbit, it's a linear orbit. It's about 200 km altitude from Earth. So, assume that this is our orbit. Okay. This is our parking orbit. And we have to chain, we have to move this to uh, a satellite. Assume there is a satellite in this orbit. Okay. So, this satellite is uh, orbiting the main body, Earth. In this orbit and now we have to transfer this to a uh, what a geostationary orbit okay, transfer this to a geostationary orbit so the geostationary orbit is having, having an altitude of about uh, 36,000 kilometers so assume a geostationary orbit high altitude orbit actually a high order orbit. So if we look at this we will feel like we can perform a simple Hoffman transfer but you should uh, take care of this inclination change. Initially it was 28 degree. Now we have to change the inclination. So it's just kind of view, one kind of view of this uh, plane change and now we can draw another one so that you will understand the concept so uh, these are the two orbits okay actually these two orbits will look like this but uh, if you see from the inclination change so assume this is our main body and our initial orbit initial orbit is like this okay. 
So this is our initial orbit. And this is about 28 degree inclination. Okay. This orbit is about 28 degree inclination and the satellite may be at, at some point. Okay. So now we have to descend. We have to move the satellite to a new orbit of geostationary orbit. Seeing the geostationary orbit like this. So So it's about uh, zero degree inclination. Okay, it's about zero degree inclination with the initial orbit or with earth. So this is the second orbit. So here the inclination is coming here. So this change is 28 degree. Okay, now we have to change the satellite into this orbit. Okay. So you can see the difference. So this is our main body. We have the same and this is our initial orbit and the red one is same and the blue one is our final orbit and it is inclined at 28 degree and the, these two are not touching that that can be seen from this figure okay okay figure and figure number rainbow either and non touching so we have to do some Hoffman transfer here and we have to change uh, do some inclination change so there is a 28 degree inclination so inclination change under so we can perform an inclination change operation so plane change operation okay. so here and the constraint we can find some ways to perform the operation okay perform the operation so here and the figure we can do first we can get two operation two sets of operation that is one is we can transform the satellite in the main orbit that is the parking orbit to the geostationary orbit by a Hoffman transfer and we can change the orientation of the orbit okay so assume there is an orbit which is parallel to our, or which is in plane with this initial red orbit okay assume there is an orbit uh, which is what plane with this orbit okay. assume this one so in this way okay. I hope you can see this so if you are having an orbit like this so that you can change the satellite in this orbit that is in the parking orbit to this a uh, new geostationary orbit of the same 28 degree inclination okay a 28 degree inclination or all the new orbit like in the first transfer here then change the inclination of main orbit okay that's the first case okay that's uh, that's one case and on uh, the hoffman transfer then next hoffman transfer to the geostationary orbit and then there's a plane change the second method is we can perform first a plane change. Okay, we can initially perform a plane change like this. That is, we are going to change the plane of orbit. Sorry, So first we are trying to change the plane of the orbit so that we can there is intersection between these two this, uh, these two orbits are touching so that okay. so assume we are uh, getting one more orbit that is this yellow orbit is uh, same as that of this parking orbit the size is same as that of this parking orbit but the inclination is uh, 28 degree so uh, sorry the inclination is 0 degree 
okay inclination is zero degree so we can perform an inclination change okay inclination change why because these two orbits are touching each other the size is same and then when I say is under and touch same so we can perform a simple plane change then we can transfer the into a geostationary orbit okay so geostationary orbit is a zero degree than any so if I already discuss it then I'm going to conclude here so what we are going to do is first one okay there are two cases that is first is simple so case each uh yeah case one so first case that is another one so first case we are doing a simple 28 degree inclination change okay simple 28 degree inclination change at r1 that is the first orbit so first orbit will be the inclination change so that is assuming our initial body our main body and there is a parking parking orbit and I am transferring this to a new orbit new parking orbit of zero degree inclination okay so here it is 28 degree change so this is about 28 degree and this is about 0 degree so there is happening a simple plane change okay simple plane change so what we have to find first is uh, since we are having two orbits that's initial one is uh, what this parking orbit and final one is that geostationary orbit in case in the general light first uh, R1 under So uh, we can find V1, V1 which is equal to root of mu by R1. Okay. So what is that? Uh, you just do this. That uh, you can take mu is equal to four into ten raised to fourteen. Okay, four into ten raised to fourteen, and this R1, R1 is given as what? What is the radius of Initial orbit that is six five seven zero kilometer. Okay, six five seven zero kilometer. So you can uh, write like this: four into ten raised to fourteen divided by six five seven zero into ten raised to three. So doing by doing this, you will be getting seven point eight kilometer per second is the V one and the velocity at geostationary orbit V2 is equal to root of mu by R2 so that it is root of 4 into 10 raised to 14 divided by R2 what is R2 the altitude is 4 to sorry the radius is 4 to 160 42,160 kilometer Return raise to three meters. So you will be getting the velocity as three point zero eight kilometer per second, and the inclination theta is given as twenty eight degree. Okay. So these are common for all common for the same orbits. So assume there is a plane change. Okay, simple plane change. So we know. The formula for simple plane change as delta v is equal to 2v sin theta by 2. Okay. So, here delta v in the sense uh, we are performing two or uh, two uh, impulsive transfer that is first one for inclination change and then to uh, orbital change that is a dimension change. So, here um, uh, we can rewrite as delta v1. Okay, first operation is delta v1 is equal to v1 sine theta by 2, theta by theta is 28 degree 14. Okay, 
So what is V1 here? It's a circular orbit of radius 6570 kilometer. So it is 2 into 6570 into oh sorry 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 the, there's a velocity velocity we have found here. So what is that? Velocity V1 units upon here seven point eight into sine forty. So if you do this, you will be getting three point seven seven kilometer per second is the delta V1. Okay, so delta V1 is this much. And now we are performing the next operation of uh, taking it to a new orbit new orbit or uh, at zero degree that is geostationary orbit okay we are moving the satellite into a geostationary orbit so uh, initially we did the plane change so that we can perform an orbit change so this will be looking like this so uh, since the orbit uh, dimensions are different we can perform a Hoffman transfer okay we can perform a Hoffman transfer. So I will redraw the figure for understanding. Uh, okay. So this is our main body. Sorry. This is our main body. And this is our initial orbit. That is the initial, this is not initial orbit. Uh, this new orbit is inclined at zero degree. That is the orbit we have obtained after plane change. Okay, plane change is here on the orbit. So, before plane change, there is an orbit of the same altitude but 28 degree inclination. Now, the orbit is a zero degree inclination because we have changed the plane and we are having. The final orbit that is geostationary orbit. So this is the large orbit, okay, high altitude orbit. So we can perform a Hoffman transfer here, Hoffman transfer. So assume we are having an ellipse which connects both the uh, both the orbits. So, by using this ellipse only, we can perform this operation. So, assume this ellipse. Okay. Now, we can explain this Hoffman transfer. So, initially, we are having a velocity for this one. Uh, for circular orbit, we are having some velocity of at 7.8 km per second. In the final circular orbit, we are having some velocity. Uh, but actually what we have to do is find the velocity for this elliptical orbit at perigee and apogee. Okay, perigee and apogee. And this difference in this uh, velocities at these touching points will give delta V. Okay, that will give the delta. So first, we have to find, uh, just name it as, since th uh, this, this orbit is for one, we are for, uh, naming the orbits, that is this one. Okay, Z1 is for one, orbit one, and the final one is orbit two, and this is OT, that is transfer orbit. So, we have to find this uh, VT1 that is at perigee what is the uh, transfer orbit perigee velocity VT1 and we have to find VT2 also that is apogee velocity VT2 okay just naming this and yeah, we are having this velocity for the circular orbit as V2 the circular orbit velocity v2 we have found it already as 3.08 km per second so uh, this velocity will be different okay 
സർക്കുലർ വാൾവിൻ്റെ വെലോസിറ്റി ആയിരിക്കില്ല ഇതേ പോയിന്റ് വരുന്ന എലിപ്സിന് ആൻഡ് ഇവിടെ വരുന്ന എലിപ്സിൻ്റെ അതേ വെലോസിറ്റി ആയിരിക്കില്ല ഈ സർക്കുലർ പോയിന്റ് അതേ വെലോസിറ്റി ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇതിൽ തന്നെ കണ്ടിന്യൂ ചെയ്യില്ലേ സോ ദാറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ദിസ് വെലോസിറ്റി ചേഞ്ച് സോ ഹോഫ് മാൻ ട്രാൻസ് സോ വി ആർ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് എൻ എലിപ്സ് സോ വി ഹാവ് ടു ഫാസ്റ്റ് ഫൈൻഡ് ദ സെമി മേജർ ആക്സ് ഓഫ് ദ എലിപ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ എ ഫോർ ദ എലിപ്സ് സെമി മേജർ സോ ഫസ്റ്റ് വാട്ട് വി ഹാവ് പെർഫോം ഹിയർ എ സിമ്പിൾ ട്വൻറ്റി എയ്റ്റ് ഡിഗ്രി ഇൻക്ലിനേഷൻ ചേഞ്ച് ഫോർ ആർ വൺ and next we are going to perform the operation that is a hoffman transfer then a hoffman transfer second part is uh, second case the first case is the second part of it then a hoffman transfer yes. okay, so for hoffman transfer we have to find semi major axis for the ellipse that is uh, sub, uh, what average of these two radius so first radius is what for uh, the final radius is 42160 plus 6570 divided by 2 so that we will be getting the semi major axis as 24 365 km okay so this is the semi major axis so find vt1 so vt1 the velocity at this point very g point that is equal to root of 2 mu divided by what is the distance from the center to this point that is r1 okay capital r1 so that is r1 given mu by r1 minus mu by a okay so substitute the values so we will be having this r1 value r1 value is equal to 6570 r1 is equal to 6570 km so substitute this values and a is also given here so if you do this you will be getting vt1 as uh 10. Point 26 km per second okay 10.26 km per second and uh, now we have to find vt2 okay sorry vt2 so vt2 is the velocity at this point so here what is the radius from the center that is the radius of the geostationary orbit for 2160 okay so that is r2 is equal to 42160 km okay so the formula is 2 mu divided by r2 minus mu by a okay so substitute these values so that you will be getting this as 1.6 km per second okay 1.6 km per second so first we have to find the velocity change at this point okay so we got these two velocities and we know the velocities of inner and outer orbits so first we have to evaluate the velocity change at this point that is impulsive velocity at this point so we know the circular velocity as 7.8 km per second and this vt1 transfer ellipse or uh, velocity is 10.26 km so what is the delta v here that is delta vt1 okay delta vt1 that is i am going to write it as delta vt1 delta vt1 is equal to is obtained like but uh first uh, okay the uh, transfer orbit velocity is 10.26 km so vt1 minus the circular orbit velocity v what okay so do this that is 10.26 km per second minus 7.8 km per second so what is the uh, first delta vt1 that is 2.46 km per second and similarly find delta v t2 delta v t2 
that is at this point so the final velocity of circular orbit is 3.08 km and velocity at apogee for the elliptical orbit is 1.6 km so we have to subtract from the circular velo orbit velocity minus velocity at the apogee point that is v2 minus v t2 okay so v2 is 3.08 minus v2 is t2 is 1.6 km so the resultant is actually uh, 1.48 1.48 km per second so we have got these two velocities so now what is our delta v what is our delta v is equal to delta v is equal to delta v1 okay delta v2 in, we have to first find the uh, total velocity change for this entire operation entire operation is this hoffman transfer so hoffman transfer velocity with delta v t1 plus delta v t2 so that is 2.46 plus 1.48 that is 3.94 km per second so this is delta v2 so delta v2 is 3.94 km per second and we have to find the total velocity change so that we we are obtained delta v1 here and we obtained delta v2 here so this delta v1 is for this plane change and delta v2 is for hoffman change so the total velocity change we can found as delta v is equal to it is not working there so delta v is equal to delta v1 plus delta v2 that is delta v1 is 3.77 kilometer per second plus 3 point delta v2 we are having 3.94 km per second okay, 3.94 so this 7.71 km per second is the total delta v okay we have to note this 7.71 km per second is the required impulse for the entire transfer that is for a sum of simple uh, 28 degree inclination change and the next Hoffman transfer so this is the entire case one and we can move to the case two okay. we can move to case two case two is uh, something which is opposite the opposed to that steps performed here so here we perform first a simple simple inclination change and then a hoffman transfer so in case two first we are uh, going for a hoffman transfer that is first a Hoffman transfer. Hoffman transfer. Okay. So initially we are going to do the Hoffman transfer. So I will draw the figure here so that we will get some clarity. So assume this is our initial body. try to incorporate these two figures here and our initial orbit also initial body and uh, we can get an initial orbit like this that orbit is about 28 degree okay 28 degree orbit orbit and orbit and we are just doing a Hoffman transfer so that okay I will draw this simultaneously I think that is better so that's our main body
so okay, I will do it separately. So first, uh, then uh, first step of pen transfer. Okay. So we are going to do a half pen transfer to new orbit. New orbit in the sense geostationary orbit. Okay. So if you look at this, you, you can understand the concept. So we have to first the initial orbit, the parking orbit is at 28 degree inclination. Okay, 28 degree inclination. So that we are transferring this from this orbit to this orbit. Uh, that is also 28 degree inclination. Okay, 28 degree inclination. So we are actually performing a Hoffman transfer between these two orbit and this O1, this O1 that is orbit one is having the same V1 okay and this O2 is having orbit 2 is having same V2 and same radius okay, R2 and here is also the same radius R1 and so that since these two orbits having same size as this case okay here also O1 is having R1 radius and O2 is having R2 radius and here in this case also, O1 is having R1 radius, R2 is having R2 radius. The velocities are also same. And if we do a Hoffman transfer in this case, and this Hoffman transfer will be same as this one. Okay, same as this one. That is, here also we are performing as a Hoffman transfer in the same. Anyway, Hoffman transfer is meant for same plane change. Okay, so here also the delta V. 1 delta v1 that is for the first case we are transferring it will be same as that of here uh, we know first case is delta v1 okay so this delta v1 for the first Hoffman transfer will be same as that of delta v2 what we obtained here okay are they same dimensional orbit in between and on the transfer so transfer epsilon same again so same delta v2 then yeah so delta v2 to uh, the, this delta v2 here and over the delta v2 now we put in that one, delta v1 at one. why because we are performing a Hoffman transfer initially so that delta v1 is equal to 3.94 kilometer per second okay. it's 3.94 kilometer per second okay. and next we have to change uh, we have to do a plane change okay we have to do a plane change so assume we are doing a plane change here so that sorry we are performing a plane change that is the initial uh, geostationary orbit that is 28 degree where the geostationary orbit name we have to change it to what zero degree Zero degree like in a model change zero. Let's just see. So now we have to move the satellite. Initially, the satellite was in this orbit, in this orbit. Then, uh, by Hoffman transfer, we have moved the satellite to this green color orbit, and now. Uh, using a plane change, we are transferring the orbit to the final orbit at zero degree inclination. So that the inclination between these two orbits, these two geostationary orbit is 28 degree. Okay, so the angle between these two orbit is 28 degree. Okay, these two larger orbits. So here actually what we are performing is a simple, uh, simple plane change. Okay, simple plane change. So first a Hoffman transfer, 
and second then a simple plain sense okay so uh, in this simple plain sense we have to find uh, since it is a simple plain sense we know the formula so that is delta v2 sorry sorry delta v2 is equal to 2 v2 v2 is the final orbit velocity into sine theta by 2 what is theta here 28 degrees so sine 14 so substitute the values for v2 uh, i think this 3.082 will be 3.08 into sine 14 okay. so you will be getting the value as 1.49 kilometer per second okay that is delta v2 is equal to 1.49 kilometer per second so that what is delta v what is the total impulsive <coughs> velocity to be added for the entire change that is both for uh, dimension change and plane change it is delta v1 plus delta v2 equal to or 3.94 plus 1.49 which is equal to 5.43 kilometer per second 5.43 kilometer per second is the total impulsive velocity needed or the velocity change so these two cases we can compare we did the same operation but in different sequence okay sequence was different or the order of change was different but the operations are same but we, we are getting different result okay operations in the order change in the form initial case in the second the case okay second at the case okay. so within now the first initial number observe in the Plane change between the larger orbits will result a small velocity change. Okay, larger orbit between plane change and we need a small amount of energy. Okay, <coughs> so uh, these are the two first case. So the second case we will be discussing in the next video. Okay, so, uh, next two case. Okay, next two case we will be discussing in the next video okay so thank you